This is the true story of a man named Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago. We don't know exactly how children found out the truth about Jesus, but it might have happened something like this. I really think Jesus was sent by God. Just because he performs miracles, it could all be magic tricks. Yeah, how else could you explain it? That's the thing, Joel. I don't have to explain it. Miracles are wonderful things only God can do. You mean like helping blind people see again? Yeah, I don't believe one word of this. I do. Sarah, what are you doing here? I forgot to feed my donkey. And when I heard you talking about Jesus, I wanted to know what you were saying. What would you know about Jesus? I know a lot. My grandmother knows his mother, Mary, and she told me all about him, how he was born and everything. It's a great story, really. Mary was a young girl living in Nazareth. She wasn't married, but she was supposed to marry a man named Joseph. One day, God sent an angel named Gabriel. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. How can this be? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of the Most High God. His kingdom will never end. Did the angel scare Mary? If an angel came and talked to me, I'd be really scared. What happened next? Know all men of Nazareth, that by command... The government made a law that all the men had to go to the city where they were born and register. You know, sign your name on some papers. All men must register forthwith. So Joseph took Mary with him to the town of Bethlehem, where he was born. When they got to Bethlehem, the whole city was very crowded, and the places to stay were full. The only place Joseph could find for them to stay was in a stable. You mean like this one? A lot like this one. And that night, baby Jesus was born. There were some shepherds out on the hills near the stable. They were taking care of their sheep when all of a sudden they saw an angel. This very day in David's town, your savior was born. Christ the Lord. The shepherds went right away to see the baby. He was lying in a manger. Can you imagine? They had to put him in a box like this one I used to feed my donkey. Then, after he was born, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. They met a man who really loved God named Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. God had promised Simeon he would live to see Jesus. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. This child is chosen by God. May you both be blessed. The baby Jesus would grow up to be God's chosen person to forgive everyone everywhere for all the wrong things they think and say and do. The things God calls sin. So Jesus was a baby, and now he's a man. Wasn't he ever a boy? Sure he was. My grandmother told me that when Jesus was about 12 years old, Mary and Joseph took him here to Jerusalem. Jesus went to the temple and talked with all the leaders and teachers. Whose child is this who asks such questions? He's from Nazareth. We thought he had left with us. Please forgive him his zeal. After that, 
Jesus went back home with his parents. As he grew up, he became wiser every day. Every valley must be filled up. Every hill One day, Jesus went to see his cousin, John the Baptizer. John baptized people who wanted to obey God. He also baptized Jesus that day. And the people who were there heard God's voice from the sky. You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Well, what did he do then? He began traveling from town to town, teaching the people about God. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Jesus went back to Nazareth, where he grew up. One day, he went to the temple and the leaders asked him to read from God's book, the scriptures. The part of the holy scriptures that Jesus read told about God's plan to send Jesus so that people everywhere could live with God forever. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. This passage of scripture has come true today as you heard it being read. The scripture come true? But only the Messiah can fulfill that promise. So we know. But there's more to the story. Jesus went down to the Sea of Galilee. Push the boat out further to the deep water. Then you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Oh, master, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. James! John! Peter understood that Jesus is God's son. But Peter was afraid. He had done so many wrong things in his life. He couldn't understand how someone as holy and powerful as Jesus could accept someone as sinful as he was. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Don't be afraid. I'd better go. Yeah, I'd better get going too. Me too. Bye. See ya. See ya. And where were you, Benjamin? Out with your friends again? Yes, Father. And was Caleb there? Yes, Father. I've told you many times I don't want you spending time with that boy. But Father... You know his father believes all those wild stories about Jesus. Why is that wrong? We believe that God will send us a mighty king. Your friend's father believes that someone born in a stable is that king. It's nonsense. But what if Caleb's dad is right? No, Benjamin, we are not going to discuss this anymore. Yes, sir. 
Labour in his purpose on Babylon, and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. Listen, wait till you hear what happened today. I was there. Yes. Jesus was in the temple teaching people about God's love. A huge crowd was packed inside, and there were even more people waiting outside. Everybody wanted to see him. Jesus, please, I beg you to save my only daughter. Sir, have mercy. She's only 12 years old and, and dying. Please, please come with me. Jairus, I'm sorry. Come on. Jesus! Your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be well. Give us something to eat. Wow, that really happened? It sure did. You never even know she'd been sick. My dad says that Jesus has friends who do really bad things. He says they're a bunch of sinners. Well, that's true, but that's only because Jesus loves and cares about everyone, no matter who they are. My dad told me about a man named Matthew who collected money from the people paying taxes as they came into the city. Follow me. Matthew is one of the 12 people Jesus chose to be his disciples. They are his best friends and they travel with him everywhere to help teach people about God. There's Simon, also named Peter. Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, of course, Thomas, another James, another Simon, Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot. How can you remember all that? He's very smart. <laughs> you would think so, but that's because you're so stupid. I am not. You're as dumb as your old donkey. Hey, she's my friend, you bully. Who are you call a bully, huh? Who? Leave her alone. Oh, yeah, she's going to stop me. Come on. You? Come on. Fight. Come on. Get on. Come on. Get on. Come on. Get on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ouch, that hurts. It'll hurt worse if we don't clean it. <sighs> what happened? He got in a fight. I didn't ask you, Leah. Sorry. I got in a fight with Caleb. They were talking about Jesus. He and his friends meet all the time in Sarah's stable. I told you, nothing good comes from all of this talk about Jesus. He is not our king, and he never will be. But Father, I think he might really be the son of God. That's enough! Aren't you being a little hard on the boy? I don't think so. But it won't matter soon anyway. I've heard there may be a traitor among the so-called followers of Jesus. If that's true, you won't be causing us trouble much longer. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. 
Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the one cheek, let him hit the other one also. And if someone takes away your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do for others only what you would have others do for you. I'd like to know this man. Do you think he might be the Messiah? What did he mean when he said the Messiah? They talked about it in the temple. Messiah means the promised one. Come on, let's follow it. After all the mischief going with him. Good, son. This woman is silent. Let me tell you something. There were two men who owed money to a moneylender. One owed him 500 silver coins, the other 50. Neither of them can pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of both. Which one then will love him more? I suppose that it would be the one who was forgiven more. You are right. You see this woman? I came into your home. You gave me no water for my feet. Yet she has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You did not welcome me with a kiss. But since I came, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You provided no olive oil for my head. Yet she has anointed my feet with perfume. I tell you then, the great love she has shown proves that her many sins are forgiven. But whoever is forgiven little shows only a little love. Your sins are forgiven you. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he scattered the grain, some of it fell by the path and was trodden on, and the birds of the air devoured it, and some fell on rocky ground, and when the plants sprouted, they withered away because they had no moisture, and some seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with the plants and choked them, and some seeds fell in good soil, and the plants grew and bore grain, 100 grains each. This is what the parable means. The seed is the word of God. The seeds that fell along the path stand for those who hear. But the devil comes and takes the message away from their hearts in order to keep them from believing and being saved. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who hear the message and receive it gladly. But they have no root. They believe only for a while. 
and when the time of testing comes, they fall away. The seeds that fell among thorns stand for those who hear, but the worries and riches and pleasures of this life crowd in and choke them, and their fruit never ripens. And the seeds that fell in good soil stand for those who hear the message and retain it in a good and obedient heart, and they persist until they bear fruit. Where is your faith? Sorry I hit you, Benjamin. Forgive me. Master, send the people away so that then they can go to the villages and farms around here and find food and lodging. You yourselves give them something to eat. But all we have are five loaves and two fish. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth. Son of God. Where have you been? Father, I have to tell you the truth. We all went to see Jesus. Why? I still can't believe it, even though I saw it with my own eyes. He turned a couple of fish and some loaves of bread into enough food to feed the whole crowd. Who knows, Jonathan? Maybe he really is the Messiah. Don't you start believing this nonsense. <sighs> what 
what should we do? What do the scriptures say? How do you interpret them? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You're right. Do this and you'll live. Who is my neighbor? There was once a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when robbers attacked him, stripped him, beat him, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest came that way. When he saw the man, he walked by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also came there, went over and looked at the man, and then walked by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling on that road came across the man. And when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to the man, poured oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. Then he put him on his own animal and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day he gave the innkeeper two silver coins, and he told him to look after the man. And when I come back, he said, I will pay you whatever else you spend on him. Which one of these three acted like a neighbor towards the man who was attacked by the robbers? The one who was kind to him. <laughs> you then do the same. Ah. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the greatest. Hey, what's happening? What's going on? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me! He's a miracle worker. Maybe he can do something. We haven't lost. What do you want me to do for you? I want to see you again. Then see. Your faith has made you well. I can see. <laughs> I can see! They say he's going to talk. Show us, Lord, show us the true way. This man truly is a prophet. My Lord and Master, is he is in the atonement. Out! Oh, Lord, save us! Show us the true way, Lord. Why is that man climbing that tree? He's too short to see through the crowd. <laughs> Hurry down, Zacchaeus. For I must stay in your house today. My house? Listen, I give half of my belongings to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will pay him back four times as much. Oh, I don't believe it. The tax collector paying back his taxes. Impossible. Salvation has come to this house today. For this man also is a descendant of Abraham. The son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Listen. 
we are going to Jerusalem, where everything the prophets wrote about the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and treat him shamefully and spit upon him. He will be whipped and killed. But on the third day, he will rise. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Hey, there's something different about this place. Yeah, Sarah's donkey is missing. He's not missing. I let somebody else use him. Who would want to borrow your old donkey? <laughs> Command your disciples to be quiet. I tell you, if they were to be quiet, the stones themselves would begin shouting. I tell you that this poor widow put in more than all the others. For the others offered their gifts from what they had to spare of their riches. But she, poor as she is, put in all the living that she had. Teacher, we know that what you say and teach is right. We know that you pay no attention to man's status, but to teach the truth about God's will for man. Tell us, is it against our law for us to pay taxes to the Roman Emperor or not? Show me a silver coin. Whose face and name are these on it? Caesar! Then render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. What do you think he's doing? It looks like he's buying food for the Passover meal. I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, 
who bringeth forth fruit from the vine. Take this and share it among yourselves. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who bringeth forth bread from the earth. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man must die as God has determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. It can't be. It can't be. What a can't be. Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and to die I tell with you, Peter, you. The cock will not crow this day before that you shall thrice deny that you know me. The council has made their decision. Jonathan, what is it? It looks as if the reign of that so-called king is about to come to an end. I just received a message from the council. One of the followers of Jesus, a man named Judas Iscariot, has agreed to help place him under arrest. How did they talk him into something like that? Didn't take much. Just 30 silver coins. By tonight, they're going to arrest Jesus and make sure that he doesn't escape. No. Please, no. Is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man? Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Come on, arrest him. Enough of this. You have to come with swords and clubs as though I were an outlaw. I was with you every day in the temple and you did not try to arrest me. But this is your hour to act, when the power of darkness rules. Arrest him. This man, too, was with Jesus. Woman, I don't even know him. I saw them together. Thank you. 
<laughs> there is no doubt that this man was with Jesus, because he's also a Galilean. Go away. <laughs> I don't know what, what you're talking about. <laughs> Prophesy. Who'll hit you next? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, I say. Bring him before the council. Move! Tell us, are you the Messiah? If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you a question, you will not answer me. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right side of Almighty God. Are you then the Son of God? You say that I am. Who gives him the authority to break all We ourselves have heard what he said. We will take him to Pilate. Yes. Yes. Away with him. We're taking Jesus to Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate, he's the meanest of all Roman rulers. He's already killed thousands of people by hanging them on wooden crosses. Move. What do you want here at this hour of the morning? We caught this man perverting our people. He caused an uproar in the temple market. What will be his punishment? Sentence him. I see no reason to condemn this man. No reason. We found him guilty, telling them not to pay taxes to the emperor, claiming himself the Messiah, a king. A king? Are you the king of the Jews? So you say. He began in Galilee, and now he has come here. In Galilee? Is this man a Galilean? In that case, we'll let Herod deal with him. He's still here in Jerusalem, isn't he? Take him to Herod. Is it that you say you are? Who are those you call your disciples? It is said by many you can perform signs. Do something for me. My lord. He has been corrupting all the people. He calls himself 
the king. This man? A king? <laughs> Your Majesty. Mark him well. Send him back to Pilate. This is his province. This man has done nothing to deserve death. So I will have him scourged and let him go. You are obliged to release one man to us at this festival. Release to us Barabbas. Yes, Barabbas. 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 And away with this man. Barabbas. Yes, give us Barabbas. You, you, scourge him. Simon of Cyrene, sir. Step over here. Forgive them, Father. I know not what they do. He has saved others. Let him save himself.
What does that sign say? It says King of the Jews. If Jesus is king, why are they doing this to him? I don't know. Jonathan, do you suppose that Into thy hands, I commit my spirit. I have prepared a tomb for the teacher. I would like to take his body. You can take it. Forgive us. We are following the body of our Lord. All are welcome. But come, the Sabbath is approaching. I can't believe we'll never see Jesus again. Wait a minute. Don't you remember what Jesus said over and over again? What? I remember Jesus said that in three days he would be alive again. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee. The Son of Man will be handed over to sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Listen, the stone was rolled away. We entered, and the body of our Lord was gone. Gone? And two men appeared to us, angels shining like the sun, and said to us, why do you look for the living among the dead? It's true. Believe us. Believe us. We saw them. Go and see for yourself. The tomb was empty. Our Lord was gone. You must believe us.
The Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. We didn't recognize him. What? Not on the road. But when he broke bread, then we knew. At Emmaus. How strange he should go there. Peace be with you. Why are you troubled? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look, at my hands and my feet, and see that it is I myself. Feel me and you will know. For a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see I have. These are the very things I spoke to you about while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets and the Psalms had to come true. This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, the message of repentance and of forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. When Caleb first told me that Jesus was God's son, I didn't believe it. But then I saw all the incredible miracles Jesus did, and I listened to him teach about God's love. I also saw the terrible things they did to Jesus. I saw them beat him. I saw them nail him to the cross. I saw him die. I saw them take his body down and carry it away. But I never thought that I would see Jesus again. But then something wonderful happened. God kept his promise. He promised that he would bring Jesus back to life. In the scriptures it says that whoever believes that Jesus is God's son will live with them now and live with them forever. I'm glad because that's what I want to do. Well, what a great story. And it's true. You've watched and wondered with Caleb, Joel, Nathan, and Benjamin who Jesus really is. You saw and heard me make my choice to believe that Jesus is God's son and ask Jesus to live in me. Now it's time for you to make a choice. Would you like to ask Jesus to live in you now? Your answer could be, I don't understand. Or, I would like to talk to my mom and dad first. Or, I'm just not ready yet. Or your answer could be, yes. I want to ask Jesus to live in me right now. I want Jesus to forgive me for all of my sins, all the wrong things I've thought or said or done. And you could tell him that you want to live with him forever and ever. Whenever you choose to say yes, you need to talk to God using your own words or a prayer like this. Dear God, I believe Jesus is your son. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for all the wrong things I have thought and said and done. Please forgive me for my sins. I ask Jesus to be with me and to live in me always. Help me to be the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you for answering my prayer. Would you like to pray this prayer right now? If your answer is yes, talk to God with me now. I will pray slowly. You can pray after me phrase by phrase. Dear God, I believe Jesus is your son. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross. For all the wrong things I have thought and said and done. Please forgive me for my sins. I ask Jesus to be with me and to live in me always. Help me to be the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you for answering my prayer. Amen. Now trust God's promise that he loves you and that Jesus will be in you always. If you prayed this prayer, it would be good to tell someone like your mom or dad or your grandparents or a friend. You are beginning one of the greatest adventures of your life. 
This new friendship is with Jesus and God his Father. There are four things to help you understand and love God more. Read God's book, the Bible, every day. There are hundreds of promises God has written for you. Talk to God. You can talk to God about anything, anytime, anywhere. Tell others about your friend Jesus. And find ways to be with people who know and love him. We really had a great time telling you the true story about Jesus. Now, it's your turn. Go tell your friends.